Hey guys, just wanted to quickly update you on my CPA journey. So I recently scheduled for the new bar exam, um, which is the business analytics reporting. As I mentioned in a previous video, that's something that I said I would probably do. Well, I've gone ahead and uh, scheduled to sit for that exam. I also am using the same test prep provider, which is Gleam or Glime, whatever you want to call it. Um, I've really enjoyed their stuff in the past. So, um, and I feel like that they helped me to do, I felt pretty good about the, the FAR exam. I don't know if I've passed it yet. I'll talk a little bit more about, um, since I've, since I've taken it, kind of the questions I've thought back on and the areas and where I struggle, I'll talk about that in just a minute, but, um, yeah, I'm using Gleam again and I took a practice test already and I'm at about 70% on this material, uh, just as a, you know, out the gate score. So that's another one of the reasons I went ahead and, and, and scheduled this exam. A lot of this stuff for me and just having, you know, done it for many years and have taken other, um, you know, gotten other pieces of uh, education, that sort of thing. A lot of this stuff is, is stuff I've already been ex exposed to. As I look through the topic areas, it's like 95% stuff that I have already um, either been tested on or I've done a lot in practice. So I feel pretty good about business analytics and reporting personally. Now, if you're somebody that is, you know, you're just wrapping up college or whatever, and you know the CPA is your first um, big certification or a piece of education. You haven't done like a master's degree or anything. There could be a lot on this exam that you have not had any exposure to. So your, um, you know, your knowledge it may not be what mine is. And so I'll try to I will uh, drop the a lot of the topic areas that are covered on this exam uh, based on what my test prep provider says below. And uh, hopefully that'll give you an idea of whether or not you've had exposure to some of this and give you an idea of how well you might uh, possibly do if you were to take uh, a practice exam today. Um, so going back, I want to really quickly revisit FAR. And uh, again, some of the reasons for me, go ahead and schedule the, the bar exam. Um, as I've had some more a few more days to think about some of the questions that I kind of stalled me a little bit on the FAR exam. Some of the areas that I struggled a little bit were in the area of like finance leases. Um, there was a little bit on exchange, maybe some exchange rate related questions or something like that. And some activity, activity ratio related questions. Um, of course, I can't go into the details of those questions. Uh, but you, it, after you take any of these exams, there will be specific questions that you'll remember or pieces of it, you know, that you kind of, um, if, if you struggled in those areas, you'll remember uh, some of those questions. And those are some of the areas that I know that I, that I, I felt like I struggled in. I would, um, you know, and I, I probably knew uh, previous to going to the exam, I definitely did know that those were some of the areas that I wasn't going to be as strong in, particularly finance leases. You know, I've, I've done in practice a lot with operating leases. And so, um, you know, I knew, I knew a lot from that standpoint and I felt good. I felt pretty good about the material, but clearly I wasn't where I needed to be. I don't think, um, I don't think it's going to affect whether or not I passed. I still felt really good about the overall exam, but I just want to kind of throw that out there. If there are areas out there for you that, you know, you feel um, a little bit weak in, maybe go ahead and try to try to uh, sure those up. And hopefully you won't, you know, be dealing with what I'm dealing with right now. Just like a little bit of uh, stress about those, you know, handful of questions or so. Um, so again, like I said, I, overall still though, I felt really good about the FAR exam and the FAR exam, the bar exam built on the FAR exam. Uh, there's definitely stuff I'm seeing as I look at the topic areas like um, consolidation accounting, governmental accounting, uh, those sorts of things that are, you know, that I've already got been tested on and it's building on those. But there are some topics that are not, that have, were not touched. So for instance, totally new stuff, uh, a lot of cost accounting stuff, you know, costing systems, all that sort of thing. A lot of this stuff was covered very heavily on the CMA 
And I think that's one of the reasons that when I took my practice test, um, I've already got a 70% without even going, beginning to go through the questions or going through any of the study material. Um, there are other stuff on there related to like valuation, uh, COSO, um, just, uh, you know, other stuff that data analytics, big data, all this sort of stuff, other stuff, um, that is much more, I'll say useful if you're working in a business, if you're trying, you know, you're not out here working in public accounting and doing stuff like tax and audit. This is stuff that's going to be much more practical, practical and much more useful working in a business setting and trying to help businesses, um, you know, derive business insights to make better decisions. This is the type of stuff that is, seems to be really covered pretty heavily, uh, within bar. So that being said, this is the stuff that I like, you know, this, this is the stuff that I'm excited about, uh, that I, um, you know, that's what I want to be doing. And, and so, you know, that's the reason I chose this discipline exam. And one of the things I meant to say was this is one of the three discipline exams. Uh, I can't remember the other two are called, but I think they relate to tax and maybe audit. Um, but, uh, this is the reason I, I this is the reason I chose this discipline exam. And it, this, these three are replacing BEC. So, uh, I think it was a really smart move by, um, the IACPA and, and, uh, uh, NASBA to, to, to do this. I'm not sure exactly who's more in charge of, of making those changes, but, um, I think it was a really smart move to change the CPA this way because it's one of the things that I always criticize. And one of the reasons I avoided getting the CPA for so many years, because I thought it was so focused on, I thought it was so much for people that were really wanting to go the public accounting route, really wanting to do like public accounting and tax accounting. And also what I had seen and kind of heard was that people that made, you know, made that jump from being in those areas or just having a CPA, like them trying to be successful in roles where you have to sort of act almost in an advisory role or you have to help the business to make better decisions it was difficult on existing CPAs to do that because they're so entrenched in, you know, looking back and making sure that we're, uh, you know, are we reporting this the way it's supposed to be reported or, you know, those sort of things. That was one of the, um, just, and I don't know how true that is, but that, that's just one of the sort of anecdotally, one of the limitations that I always kind of felt was with the CPA. And so I had avoided it for years and told many people, like, I don't think I'll ever do that. So I'm glad they're making that change for those folks like me that want to take and do something different. So if you're one of those people out there that's doing, you know, um, I think about people that are particularly like coming out of school, like fresh out of school accountants, and you're not wanting to go that public, public route. You want to go jump into a business, but you know, you, you really like accounting and that sort of thing. Um, and you think down the road, maybe I'll make a transition and, and go into uh, more of a forward looking, um, you know, trying to help the operational result uh, sort of path, then choosing the bar discipline exam is probably a much better uh, approach for you would be my opinion. And you'll find the material much more fun and interesting, useful. Uh, it's always fun. You know, I've studied for, for many of these like cert certification stuff like this. And I'll say that it's always fun when you run into material that you think will help you to improve the op, you know, the operations of the business and improve the financial result of the business. Those are fun things to learn to me. You know, some people, I think, you know, the more uh, traditional or conventional accounting or accountants or whatever, you know, they like learning things where they're just learning standards or like, how do you, what is the current standard for how you report this thing or whatever it is, you know, I'm not like that. That's not me. I think those are important to know. And I'm glad that um, I feel really good about FAR because that's what FAR is. It's about how, you know, do you know how to report this to the standard? What is the standard for reporting this? And, you know, there's a whole lot of that. And so that's not really, it's good to know, but it's not the fun part of working in accounting and finance to me. So anyway, I think I share that. But that's where I'm at. With, uh, with my CPA journey right now, I'll have the bar exam here in the next few months. I'm excited to take it. Um, like I said, I'm already at 70% on the, uh, from my just 
preliminary exam, so I feel really good. I'm excited to get refreshed on a lot of this information, and um, I'll let you guys know how, you know, the areas that are, are troublesome for me. The one thing, I'll, again, I'll say is that I'm a little bit different of a candidate for this, for this exam because I have many years of experience doing um, a lot of this stuff, but also because I've taken some other exams. Like I said, I'm a CMA. I also have my MBA. At one point, I studied pretty heavily for the CFA, which I barely failed, by the way. I'm still pretty salty about that. I uh, took level one, but a lot of the material that's on CFA level one is covered, or some of the material, um, a significant amount of the material on CFA level one is covered uh, on this bar exam. Like for instance, I saw the CAPM, uh, Capital Asset Pricing Model, is covered on, on, the, uh, on the bar exam, which was stuff that was always really interesting to me. Um, you know, I kind of went away from the, CF, the CFA, just FYI, because I feel like the, the CPA is a much better um, designation for working within corporate finance. The CFA is great, but there's a lot of stuff related to like portfolio management and derivatives, particularly as you go in the higher level of exams. That just isn't super practical, practical or or helpful to somebody working within corporate finance. Unless maybe you're working, you know, your aspirations down the road to be a, a big time CFO in some really big company, um, you could put you could probably put the C, the C, CFA off like I'm doing um, if I ever if I ever go back and finish that. But anyway, that's sort of my background. So I've had a lot of exposure to this stuff. I know a lot of this stuff already. So it's made it easier for me. If I was somebody. You know, coming out of college, there's a lot of topics on here you may you may have never never had any exposure to, um, particularly if you're just an accounting student. So um, anyway, just kind of wanted to share all that insight with you. I hope it's helpful. Like I said, I'll drop the uh, topic areas that I'm seeing so far that are covered on this exam below. Um, if you guys have any questions, thoughts, or comments, if you've already taken it, taken it, let me know. I also want to go out and look to see um, what the recent pass rates are. Um, because I think the bar exam has only been offered for, it's only had one uh, offering window so far earlier this year. And I think those exam scores are set to release sometime next month. So we'll have an idea, a rough idea. Um, of course, this will probably change because it's such a new exam. But we'll have a rough idea of what the pass rates are on this exam here pretty soon. So, you know, BEC, from what I remember, used to be the one that was like, it was almost 65 to 70% of, of people that sat for it passed it. You, know, you, you put that in comparison to something like FAR where it's like 40 to 45, it seemed to be a much easier exam. What I'm seeing on BAR, some of this material, um, it just in my opinion, it's much harder than, it, or it could be, depending on how they decide, decide to present it, um, much more difficult concepts than what's on FAR, in my opinion. Um, so I don't know what's, what's going to happen. Um, I'm, I'm kind of anxious to see, but I'm really excited about, about refreshing myself on some of this material and learning anything new that's going to help me, uh, in my career. So, um, hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any thoughts or comments, please drop them below and, um, I will update you guys when there's a new development in my CPA journey.